Let's see. Demos. Matthias? No. What? <laughs> Why? I have nothing to, to show. You, you did something. We can look at it. Okay. Well, at least the issue. Okay, we'll see. Um, Siaman, do you have some demo? Uh, no, not this time. What did you do? You did something. I, I demoed last week. Yeah, but you did something else. Um, okay, we'll see. Uh, and that's it. I have a demo. We'll see. Nick doesn't have any demo because it has nothing. Um, okay. And I see that now you can talk and see. Good, because this Nick main doesn't do anything. Um, status. Should one, so we match some pull requests, a long triage because two weeks without triaging, adding index name to the view model. Okay, so we have more data to render stuff. Um, container settings editor. Yeah, this list needs to be reset every time, even on the update. And fix daytime field settings while editor validating. Apparently, an error message which was shown when it should not be. Okay. So, uh, two, two PRs from Jelum Cat Monkong, new contributor, and Robin Sutoras, also a new contributor. Good thing. Um, that's it. Um, questions? Then Orchard Core. Lots of PR pending. We'll process them in time. So this one. Nick, while you are here, you see this thing? Did you see my comment on Gitter? Yeah, uh, which one is it? It's, it's, it's not important. What is important is this thing in green. Origin master? Yep. Oh, it should have gone to dev. Yep. Oh, and this sorry. is a protected branch, so to be able to merge, you need to approve and to merge. Damn. And you did okay. both, so you made a new release just for a typo. Oh, great. Sorry about that. Uh, which we don't have in dev because we didn't merge back in dev, actually. Uh, okay. yeah. Sorry about that. I, I, okay. I double yeah. check, but yeah. So next time, okay. double check also what the. No, no. Sorry about that. Adding so this one, Matthias working on his branch. Um, Are you okay to merge master back to dev or take the pull request back to dev? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Um, remove a new. Is it the dev branch? Let me see.
Uh, Sebastian, you've muted yourself. Well, I didn't mute myself. I don't know what happened. The last, the last thing that I heard was... Um, I think I know when because... Yeah, the... Um, I, clicked, I clicked somewhere here and maybe this window... It, everything was frozen, so maybe this window got up and... I don't know, some, for some reason it clicked on that. Okay, so I was saying all these things already talked about last week. This thing needs a um, better solution because right now you have to resolve a service to be able to see if you can call the pluralization translation so it's really bad so let's ignore that it's, and the PR is kept open um, this is an enumeration field but we need display settings and edit settings to handle that correctly so it's kept open Update service collection extensions um, to fix an issue. I don't remember why it was. Someone reported an, reported an issue with not being able to write something. So apparently, this was not correctly registered. Oh, yeah, to be able to override the um, UID generator. Yeah, the ID generator. Yeah. Okay, that's the, that's the ID. Uh, prevent issues caused by not trim stereotype. Um, we matched it. Yeah. So now, whenever you type a stereotype, we remove the space. So the next time we use it, we know there are, there are no spaces around. Uh, from Matthias, the requested tenant is currently initializing. This is a way to uh, render a correct uh, HTTP response if. Uh, to request try to access a tenant which is not yet started instead of returning a 404 on the second one uh, fixes activity title metadata persistence um, we actually did that and we'll see there is another PR that I merged this morning that does the same thing for other uh, drivers the idea is that when we have let me show you in a driver when we have an edit and an update, in the update you need to to update the model and then return the editor to render the editor again. But this call should be the one that uh, you overrided in your driver. So in this case, because edit the override of edit is the one with a section and a bit later context, you need here to call exactly this one and not another one from the base class. Okay, and if we, if we don't do that, then we might not see the, the, the editor or the data might not be saved. Okay, so that's the idea and we'll see another PR that does it on other um, drivers. Added logger parameter in OCCMS templates. So this is from Michael Petrinolis which is, and you updated also documentation, to be able to use either serilog or nlog when you create a new um, project, a CMS project from the template. Um, why? App settings, so this is an example of app settings JSON, but, 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 yeah, here you see use serilog web instead of use nlog but the default our default application in the solution still uses nlog but in template you have a choice now to use either that or the other one um, where is that do we have an example here templates these are the new files if you then log if you serilog you see here so that's cool to generate the template, but oh, maybe in the okay in this readme. Yep. So the options now have nlog, serilog, and none for the logger you want to use when you generate .NET new. So 
that's good. UI to run non setup recipes. And it's interesting because uh, this morning we added the way to run setup recipes. Uh, I'll show you. Um, so from Siaman. And um, oh, you showed it last week also, I think. Yeah. Um, so now there is a new screen where you can see all the recipes that are available from the modules and you can execute them. Yeah, and you talked about that you made a change to make it a post and uh, checking site owner permission. So that's good. So it's listing all the recipes and you can run them. Uh, well, at that point, it's listing all the recipes which are not set up recipes and you can run them. Um, this one feedback from the GraphQL. PR, uh, startup filter is a fix to uh, not register some middle words multiple times because of iSATA filter. It's not yet merged because I need to understand exactly what iSATA filter is doing and why we need to handle that differently. You already answered, but I need to understand. Um, save and continue from Matthias, uh, taking feedback from the PR, we'll merge it. Um, update index MD, fix link to license. Okay, so the PR. Um, this is Jasmine updating his culture settings branch, which I need to test before accepting it. Uh, this is a new PR from Chris to um, export the roles, but I was not sure about, I need to understand what the code does. It, it's been a long time since I haven't looked at the deployment thing and, and it didn't look correct to me because of some changes. You removed one of the classes and uses an existing one. So I'm worried the permission thing here. You don't define permissions anymore. Or maybe it's on the whole. Maybe the whole class has that and you don't need that anymore. I will check. Yeah, maybe now it's an array of things and then you can set more roles and before you just add one, maybe I'll check that. Um, Matthias React to review. Matthias reacts too quickly to reviews. I just gave my opinion and then he decided, oh, this one, I gave my opinion, I decided to just do everything I said, which I'm not sure is right. <laughs> Was open for discussion. We'll see. Um, so where was I? React review, add support, multiple HTTP. Yeah, so this is another PR export media. And I commented on the PR because I think we can do more than that. Uh, so it's, the, it's a good thing. So the idea is that um, if you look, so I did that too quickly. So the import remote instance controller lets you uh, run a recipe on a, a, um, a separate uh, alternate instance on another server. Okay, you can link two servers, one by, declar uh, by declaring another client is accepted and the client by sending a post to the remote uh, machine. So you can upload content to a different machine, like a production from the staging. And what it was doing, it was just taking the zip file and looking for recipe JSON and run, running it. That's what it was doing. So if the zip file had uh, media items, um, well, the recipe JSON could do that, but you had to put it in recipe JSON, but there was no other way to add um, binary files or anything more than a recipe JSON to understand the zip file. You could just execute the recipe JSON. Um, so what he did is that he removed this code and made it an interface and an implementation and so that anyone can add more implementations for this interface and they will be called. So you can look for a JSON, you can look for binary files, you can look for anything in during a, a deployment. So it's extensible now. And I'm suggesting that we should continue the work and fix the things I see in the code that I wrote, which is bad, like this thing is bad. Uh, well, the thing which is here, because it's 
doing an, it's loading the zip file in memory that's very bad also use the correct way to send the files to the controller and also create workflow activities and finish completely this feature also in terms of security this, this is bad um, okay I will be muted also again. Um, so this PR is still open, but this this change is um, a good thing already. Um, hosted service is gently working on the background thing. Um, upgrade to Bootstrap 413, and apparently there's an issue with it. We'll see when there is no more issue. Uh, Matthias working. Yes, Antoine. Uh, yes, I managed to find a solution. Uh, it, it was because uh, our IDs, uh, the one we used to uh, for the many items, uh, are numbers, and it was not working because of this. So I prefixed okay. by the letter. I'm just not saying anything. Can you hear me? Yes. See? Uh, so that's the bootstrap branch. Uh, deploy role, we saw that. Export media, hosted services, then Matthias and his branch for the. Well, the branch is called filter box view component, but it's more than that. Um, JSON API, this is a GraphQL branch, and I will demo, uh, I won't demo that, no. Um, but the GraphQL branch, I'm working on that to review. Uh, I put some comments, I also fix some things. This, I removed it by default. So it was by default on the blog recipe, I removed it to be not on by default. It has to be a gesture to enable GraphQL. Is that, um, does that stop the test from start, um, from? I don't know. Up? I know jean Thierry said he will look at in the, uh, the, to fix the test. I broke the test, I know, but what I was trying, I wanted to have something that was working and then look at the test. I, I will look at the test after, uh, but jean Thierry will take a look, he said. Also change the services, so maybe the service, I, I, I the, the changes I did to the services, broke the test. Shouldn't be that hard to fix them, just you don't want to focus on that. I just wanted to have something that works first. Because okay. it was not working. <laughs> well, the test worked, so... Yeah, but the feature itself. What, the GraphQL feature wasn't working? No. Too slow for me. I fixed it. Um, oh, it's slow, okay. Super slow, like unusable. Like, what's the point of having a... A GraphQL, if it so, it was taking, it was accepting only twenty requests per second. Sweet. That's that's even slower than a short one. <laughs> and uh, and what else? Twenty and each request will take four hundred millisecond milliseconds. Um. So uh, no, but that's fine. That's fixed. Um, now now. The now it's 2,000 requests per second and it's taking 5 milliseconds, so it's super usable. Yeah, the, idea, the idea is that if a GraphQL query is not faster than rendering the full page in HTML with the shapes and the theming, there's a problem somewhere for the same content. You'd better, yeah. you'd better request the HTML and parse it than asking GraphQL. I mean, you see, so, but now it's, now it's faster, so that's good. Um, so I looked at into optimizations like this thing, um, 
uh, you see, let, let me show you and and this is what I also need to do in the import uh, controller I mentioned earlier uh, you see here uh, request body was read into a string and then passed to JSON okay so now in, in, in instead creating a reader on the request body and then passing the text reader to JSON so there is no there is no allocation for the string just small things um, and then this async thing so there is a helper to send requests with JSON yeah. And here, same, this has no impact at the level we were doing that, but just for sanity, oh, okay. you see I remove async and just return the async instead of async uh, await. I copied that from an older project, so that's probably why. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, cool. So this has no impact. I was looking for why it was slow, and then I found that the, the schema was not cached. So I fixed how it was done. The issue was that the, the, the null GraphQL schema hash service was resolved instead of the actual one, which means we were never caching the, the, the schema. And then when it once it was cached, there was another issue, which which is that the 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 state itself was cleared, and I figured that it was because the the schema is actually disposed automatically because it was resolved. By the DI, you see, you said add scoped I schema content schema yeah. because it was resolved by the DI and it's implementing I disposable. The DI after the request would dispose it, so you will lose the state. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so what I did is that I'm not using the DI to do that because otherwise the DI will dispose it. When we create the cached entry, I'm just creating it manually and I'm resolving the services when it's creating lazily. And then it won't be disposed by the DI and just the memory cache holds the, the value. So now it works and now it's super fast. Um, so that's good. Next step is that we need to fix the test and we need to do something different with the I dependency resolver. I don't like that pattern, but this thing owns an... So this thing is stored as a singleton in the tenant, but this thing is a scoped service and it will resolve all the services for a scoped service. So we need to change it to use HTTP context provider. Uh, but uh, Jean Thierry knows about it and I will do it later. Um, so, but that's better. Okay, so this is fixed. I commented on... Um, yeah, sharing the screen, yes, okay, okay. Yeah, I commented on the PR also about this one because of security. We have one permission, which is good, but it's not enough. The only permission is execute GraphQL, which is not uh, allowed for anonymous users, which is okay. But if you want to allow some client to run GraphQL, then you allow anything with GraphQL. And not only anything, but you know we have mutations, which means you can run mutations if you can read data. So you are just giving either no access to GraphQL or full access to your site, creating tenants, deleting content and everything, just if you want to allow uh, querying stuff. So I think we need uh, more granularity. Um, either that or remove mutations. <laughs> uh, make sense? We lost Nick. Okay. Um, okay. 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 So I'm continuing my uh, reviews on this module, and we'll probably do something on the security because I don't like the how it's done right now. It's not enough. Uh, fix the guitar link from Antoine. Interesting because we match a PR that was fixing the guitar link. Oh, he used Orchard 2, okay, yeah. No, he was fixing the license.txt. The okay, license. good, thank you. Um, bootstrap decision fix, we can merge that now? Yes. Okay. Um, this one, let's open the issue related to that. Because people want to see it, as you don't want to show it. Uh, oh. Um, 
box view component so it started so there are many concerns concerns well goals in this PR but uh, now the latest update on this is that you try different ways of showing the content just as a reminder uh, I mentioned multiple times on this PR that this work maybe will be reused with the content tree maybe not so it's a dangerous um, well it's not dangerous it's just maybe some work that will be useless but maybe not Maybe you want to display, we still want to display the list like this. So different options to render the content items, showing if there is a published version, a draft version, the owner, the editor, and different dates here. And my feedback was uh, that we could uh, use the icons instead of the full text, use tooltip for showing the publish date and the draft date. Uh, just show the create date here and use um, um, time deltas like one day ago, one year ago, three minutes ago, things like this. And when you're on tooltip, show the full date. Because usually looking at the full date, it's not really obvious when it was done. It's a personal opinion, so maybe I'm wrong. Um, but at least if we can show like okay one day ago and when we hover the data we can see the full date that's fine also so that, that was some feedback and I'm not seeing see this is my feedback and you just decided to apply the feedback you can disagree and we can talk about the things and other people can also have opinions I also said why not have the uppercase in the columns like we do every, everywhere um, so that's going on but it looks good it's, it's interesting um, something I didn't oh I didn't see this yeah I saw that so every all the list now would be a, a table like this actions like like it here um, one concern could be the ex extensibility of this thing because when we had uh, sections like counts we could add well each module could add some more links to the summaries so here is completely different What is it? Same thing. I'm on. Okay. Yeah, that's the uh, that's another comment we could do. Moving away from the summaries to a table. That's a huge change. There is no more extensibility. There is still extensibility for the actions here. I assume it can be a zone, but uh, otherwise. like if you have if you had the ratings part we could add the ratings in the summary now we can't add the ratings anymore that's just an example okay just is not complaining so we'll see when he has something to say on that screen are you able to push that content to another environment what well, you know, um, so we've got that deployments module, right? Oh, you, you switch to the deployment module. Yes, you can. You can, so you can just say deploy this to that instance or whatever. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. And you'll be able to see that on this screen. What you're saying has nothing to do with what you are talking about. Okay. Just, just to be okay. sure just to, to because maybe you think that we are talking about that right now oh uh, yeah maybe i missed another conversation no this one is, is so this branch here this pr is well first it says the branch was to extract the listing of the items to be able to reuse it in other pages but uh, now matthias is also refactoring how the content items are displayed in a list instead of in summaries Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, fine. Sorry about that. Okay. But, yeah, but... 
So that's just, I was w worried about your question compared to the context. Um, okay. Yeah, that, that's that's a BDC decision to change. It's nice. I'm just I just try to understand what we are losing if we go in the least view like this, or if we should have the hybrid approach like we do, like you did in the media, like with an icon switching from list to summaries. That's also something we can do to have two different views. Um, also, what I mentioned in this PR is because you are super interested into this work and you are doing good things. Uh, where did I put that? Yeah, maybe we could have like a, a list view and a grid view. Mm -hmm. The grid view will be uh, the whole way uh, that we can uh, customize and extend things. Mm -hmm. And the list view could be the the, the, yep. the, the table there. Yeah. yeah, count versus list. And still server-side generated and stored in a cookie so that the user um, has its own personal preference stored. That That's, that's doable also. And this way there is no conflict um, and 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 I said you are now the designated owner of the content tree <laughs> uh, so we can make progress on that that's no, good summary admin is good Uh, one question: If uh, the content tab doesn't have a title nope. in the list view, what should we show there? Like today, what we don't call the title; we just call display text metadata, which means any type, any handler can redefine what the display text for an item is, and the title part provides a display text which is what we display by default. But if tomorrow a content item doesn't have a, a title, then it might be its type or uh, an ID or, or something else or a description. It can be anything. It's just a handler that provides the display text metadata. Uh, I so see there, that. There will always be something. That's cool. Um, and note that even on the summary today, that's what we have. We have a, a header on each summary that is based on the display text. So whatever was in this header, it now comes in this column. That's the ID. Um, yep, yep. Uh, and another question yep. regarding the header, uh, how it works with the pagination. Uh, for example, if you have 1,000 items, mm -hmm. uh, how it would be sorted, I mean, uh, oh, I, in this case, I don't think you can. S well, maybe you can sort, but some on some of the elements, and that's not an issue because you can already say, you see, at the top, sort by. You see, creation date. You can say you can't say title right now. Um, you know, you can't say title, or you can already in order the one, but we will assume that you will have a title part or something like that. And if you don't have a title part, then you can't sort. Um, by title. Mm. The only way to do that will be to use uh, Lucene to sort when you want sort by title because we index the display text uh, whether or not you have a title part and then we can then sort by display text with Lucene but not with the SQL here which is used here. But people mostly not don't care about ordering by title usually they care about filtering stuff finding their stuff like stuff that was created uh, yesterday or updated or based on a taxonomy based on a custom search based on full text search um, but sorting by title usually doesn't make more sense much sense so uh, but yeah that's why we need the content tree to be able to filter more easily and make it uh, extensible the filtering so this is static okay we have pro we provided some ways to sort to filter but we need uh, something that can be changed by modules and rendered as a tree um, 
yes there is that's why you yeah if you can find the link again or Antoine can help you he finds all the links uh, this is something that Bertrand did in Orchard 1 and we already said we want that in core um, okay so that's the status of this PR I was there um, this is a fix um, this, the stuff I explained to you earlier now this is the fix applied to more drivers it used to work because of another bug I can't explain why it worked but now because of the, the other bug was fixed we really need to call um, or maybe the issue here was the await also yeah no maybe no no this is really because we need to call into the the, the method that is in the same driver you see here the oh interesting it's not calling the same one I am confused I will check this one I'm confused why it's uh, maybe it's not necessary so maybe in this case it will still call this one but uh, th maybe this change is not necessary some of them might be necessary but this one is not you see here it's calling the correct one but the other one is not calling the, the one we have in driver so maybe this one is not necessary I'll check um, recipes UI oh yeah so this is um, a branch from Chris uh, uh, Siaman you're interested into this one because what he did is where is the other commit here what he did is that in the change you made is now also taking the setup recipe but when it's displayed is displaying it with a batch warning this is a setup recipe um, and this way you know it's not a recipe that you should reuse like the other ones but you can run a setup recipe and because setup recipes at some point will be um, idempotent, potent then that makes sense to be able to run again and again the same setup recipe if there are some things interesting inside that you want to do but that's not uh, the most common way and he removed this permission he created a permission to execute recipes which I asked him to remove because when you can execute a recipe you can add yourself to custom roles and site owner and everything so that makes it unusable well that makes it um, useless so we just need to keep the site owner permission if you are not the site owner permission you should not be able to run a recipe otherwise you can be a site owner because you will run a recipe that gives you permission to be a site owner so that's bad so we removed it in the later um, commit and small recipe UI changes on the dev branch oh I merged the thing so I need to get these things now so I merged this branch now okay that's it um, I will just show you what I did with taxonomies worked on it I have something that works and I'm super not happy with the result I have more questions now that I've done something than I had before super bad as soon as uh, my computer wants me to work ew. is it Visual Studio that doesn't want maybe that's just Visual Studio might have to kill it is this one working yes so this one doesn't want to work okay let me kill this one okay should call I will go on the correct branch before um, should the 
branch is nomi. So taxonomy is super important. Taxonomy is a list of terms which can be hierarchical. Okay. So it's a managed vocabulary. Um, and we use each term to be able to tag a content item. Okay. Or to classify content items. Um, so then oh, here. Um, what do I have? I have GraphQL on this branch, so it won't load it, and that's fine, I assume. Let's see if it works if I run it. So, what I did is that I almost did, I reused what we had. Let me show you taxonomy. Taxonomy, so I made a module, I made a migration. The migration will define the type taxonomy, which is a content item. Say it has a title and an alias. Um, that's not important. What I have here is a taxonomy content handler. So it's a content handler. So whenever a taxonomy is created, is instantiated, then if we find it's a taxonomy, we add a taxonomy part. Okay. Um, and this is kind of useless. We could add it statically uh, to the taxonomy type, which is created here. But that's fine. And when we update a taxonomy, what I do here is I add a back part. And I add a back part to a taxonomy with the term content type, which is defined on the taxonomy part. So the idea is that when we, so in Orchard One, um, when we created a taxonomy, we had a custom admin screen. When we create a taxonomy, we create a new type for the term, a dynamic type, and then we associate the, this new type we created with the taxonomy. The issue is that the type is visible like every other type, but it's the specific one and it's dedicated for its own taxonomy. And we can still change it, but that, the issue is that if we then change the, the name of the type, then we break the taxonomy. So it's not very flexible. It's like we create content types dynamically, but then changing anything to them might break your taxonomy. So here, what I wanted to do is that um, let me in, and I will enable the taxonomy module. Taxonomy. So if I enable, it just creates a new type called taxonomy, which is a standard content type with a title and an alias. Okay, very simple. But now, if I create a taxonomy because it's creatable. And you see the difference with Orchard 1 here is that it's like any other content type. It's not a specific one. It's just a content item. There is no screen for taxonomy. It's just a content item. And we detected here that we need to add the taxonomy part. And the taxonomy part has an editor that will render this thing, that will let me choose what is the term content type. So what is the taxonomy able to contain? And here we can type some content type. I initialize it with color, but we can type, for instance, uh, article. We could have a taxonomy of articles. Or if I have a type called author, I could have a type called, I, I could use that. Um, so we can set the type of an existing content type in the taxonomy. So it's not creating a 
new type automatically for this taxonomy, it lets us select a type. And the selector will be later the content type selector we already have for many parts. And, and then we can just check the one we want. Which means we can also decide to change the type at some point in the middle, and that will still work. Um, it won't break anything. So that's the first thing here. So if I say color, I will just first uh, create a content type color. Create a new type, color, create. And I will say it has a title. And that's it. Um, save. And that's all I need. And then when I create a new taxonomy, I say my taxonomy will be colors. Elias, I don't care, of type color, and I will publish it. So super simple, and there is no special concept. Um, so now I have a taxonomy. And now because I created it, look at that. Now it says you can add a color to a taxonomy. So now when I edit the taxonomy, because it's saved, it lets me add a color. So I can add a color, and you see the behavior compared to Orchard 1. It enables the, the editor directly here, so I can say blue. I can add another one, and I can say red, and I can save, okay? And I have my taxonomy with blue and red, and I can change it. So you recognize, can everyone, can you hear me? Nobody's saying anything, that scares me. I can hear you. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, so you recognize the back part. So the only thing I had to do to make this work is say that when we edit a taxonomy, we add a back part to it, and we give the setting to the back part by uh, saying I have a bag of whatever type the taxonomy is made of. Okay, that's, so that's super simple. We just have the bag behavior from that, which means the taxonomy content item contains all the terms. So the JSON document of the taxonomy contains all the terms. There are some pros and cons, but I think more pros and cons compared to Orchard 1, because people were complaining that we had to load every content item because it was separate all the time, and that's very bad in terms of perf. And in this case, we can also, if we want, uh, cache the taxonomy, and it will have everything inside. Um, and we have a list of colors, OK? Um, now, the second advantage of that, of doing just nothing, just reusing the concept, is that it's a, it's a flat list. A back part is a flat list. What if I want uh, a tree? Well, I just have to say that a color can have um, subcolors, OK? So I just have to go to the types and say that color has a back part. I can put it, yeah, that's fine. A back part of what? Of color. You see, this is the content type selector I mentioned. And now, OK, save. So now if I go back to my taxonomy, so I have colors, which is a taxonomy. And if I edit it, and if I did blue, blue can have colors, dark blue, and can also have dark nice. blue, can have super dark blue. <laughs> Yeah, just raising the concept, I did nothing, just said my color has a bag of colors. And now I have it's hierarchical. And you could say a color can have a list of authors if you want. That's, that's, a, that's just, you just compose your types as you want. Uh, so the, the, the hierarchy of terms can be more than just one type now. So if I save colors, blue, it has dark blue. Okay which itself has super dark blue. And in the JSON document, what we have is taxonomy containing a back part property containing a list of items. The first item is blue. It has a back part property containing one item and so on. OK? So we could, it's just a content item. And we can version it. We can translate it. We can do anything we want on all of that. Uh, then what I did is 
so we have an article here uh, and I will edit the article content type and say we will add a field taxonomy field okay standard field I need to give the name I will say colors and I can say which taxonomy do you want to use so here it will only list the content items that are taxonomy so I'll say color hint whatever check if the field is so all the options we want and I will save which means now if I create a new article this field will so it's right now is well, that's what I want that, that's what I don't like with my taxonomy um, so it will load the, the first it will work okay I can say colors blue and red these are the first level elements and that's the big issue because um, it looks magical but here there is no magic anymore how do I know that what what's the hierarchy I want to render here because yes a color has a back part of colors but I didn't say that this is the there are the terms of the taxonomy also uh, this back part containing blue red yes I define it by myself I said there is a back part I can give it a name if I want this way I know it's a, it's not a standard back part it's the back part of the taxonomy so I can find them but the fact that blue the, the content item blue has dark blue and super dark blue inside there is no metadata that tells it so I can't find which ones I should render so one solution could be that when we add the back part to color then we could name it specifically but then that's a super hacky way to create a, a hierarchical taxonomy uh, I would just have liked to say taxonomy is a hierarchy of colors and then it's showing a hierarchy I don't have to to deal with the fact that color has a back part of colors just when I render a color and I'm editing a taxonomy then it's showing a hierarchy of things the same way I created the so the same way when I did colors I have a hierarchy here but here I have a hierarchy because I said color has colors I think I should not have to say color has colors but taxonomy is a hierarchy of colors uh, so that, that's where I'm um, blocked uh, right now um, so to be able to do that um, the same way we have the back part that provides this behavior of adding items to the content item and the editor is dynamic the same way we have that we should have maybe a, a tree part that says I'm a tree part of color and this way we use the same we use the same code we do to render the editors but uh, we automatically add the button to add sub items to the item because we know it's a tree and not just a list so I think that will work so this and that will also solve a, um, an old issue we have with Orchard one which is that people ask how do I organize my content as a hierarchy and we tell them well create a taxonomy if you want to create a hierarchy of things and that's kind of cheating but that, that, that does a job but that's kind of cheating here if we had a a tree part like we have a back part um, we could say well make your type be have a tree part and then or make a content yeah make a type that will have a tree part and then in the tree part select the, the items you want the content types you want to be part of your tree and then you have a tree your content item will be a tree then this way we don't have to say it has to be a taxonomy no create a tree a taxonomy can be a tree also um, and maybe we don't even need the fact that it's a taxonomy we could create a new type called foo and it happens to be a tree and I could select it from other content items if the field is the tree field um, so I think that 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 could work in in this case um, so it's just for me to copy paste what we have for back part but make a tree but then you could say what's the point of a back part if we have a tree part a tree can be a back so I'm, I'm confused um, we'll see um, so that's why I don't like it right now because the fact that it's right now I have to have color have a back part that breaks the thing so I think we need another concept which is a tree part 
um, or extend bag to be able to have some items and just a checkbox and that's that's fine too um, so I'll see about that unless someone has some opinion so wise I will go with that um, something else that is super problematic um, what do we do with that <laughs> uh, so when when we have a content item so I create if I create a new article okay this article I will call it uh, hey, oh, keyboard keyboard doesn't work ah my remote connection will die um, yeah okay that's fine so if I create a new article and I select terms here oh it works now. Um, so what happens is that this field will hold the content item IDs of the, the colors okay um, these content item IDs they are not visible outside of the taxonomy content item itself so they are contextual to the taxonomy content item um, so we can find them in the tree uh, that would be even better if they were stored as uh, ID 1 slash or let's say ID blue slash uh, ID dark blue if I select dark blue okay, so when I we have a list of we can have um, the content item ID with the relationship or we can have something like um, so we know the taxonomy ID taxonomy ID and we could have dot bag uh, something like content item ID equals I don't know one two three dot bag part I, I'm making things up but this thing could be a JSON path uh, JSON path being a, a property on a JSON document to find another node and it happens that our taxonomy is a big JSON document containing all the, the terms um, so we could reference which term we selected from the field by using something like that so it's dot, dot back part then dot back part that seems a bit odd well it's, it's just because today colors is a back part so yeah but that's purely technical you don't you don't have to care about that that's purely technical for the field because then the field can expose oh give me the terms then and it because it knows where it is in the document it will just get the document and extract the content item from this document it's just technical but it's for us a way to reference uh, the inner inner nodes that we are selecting here because they are not independent content items like in Orchard one they are a piece of the document of taxonomy yeah so it's, yeah it should be fine okay and json.net supports that and that should be yeah fast and that's good uh, the issue then is okay we can find and you see it works here because I can select and it will work but the issue here is that um, what do we do with this blue red dark blue and so on what we have in Orchard one is for each term each term has a title as an auto route because each term is a independent content content item we can go say slash and slay say colors slash blue okay and this is the slug for the blue content item. I never really liked that man. Yeah. Uh, you, but it's super useful because when you have speakers slash uh, Billy Roy, you will display the Billy Roy content item which a session has been tagged with because he's a speaker for that. And when you click on that, you see his content item. So you see his face, his bio, and all the sessions also which are associated to that. Yeah, but can we, just pump out? Can, we, can we not just use a list builder or something to, to do that kind so, of stuff? So we could say, yeah, you you can create, but you can the create... one thing that I really didn't like about that taxonomy module as well, my superb was that everything was everything had an auto route, regardless. It's not because you don't like it that some other users don't find it super useful. It's useful. But 
like today when we create a, a blog there is a url and it lists all the blogs super useful and when you click on the blog post it displays the blog post so that's super useful you don't have to create a page that will render the blog post some people like to do that but some prefer that oh my blog post page already exists a content item i can render it generically so in this case same thing and you can then customize the speaker content item template and then it will render nicely oh at the, at the same hmm? at the same time um i think taxonomies uh, should uh, how can i say this the views will will change um from from a context for, for the blogs for example you're going to show all the blog posts from um this this user or this this speaker but if you're really using the, this taxonomy for something else like products uh the views will be different so this is why maybe having routes uh already predefined for this is not really contextual to anything else than just the taxonomy itself Mm -hmm. So let's say I have a blog and I have a taxonomy with categories. What you want to do is list all the blog posts with a specific category. Yeah. How do you do that? In order to one, a category is a content item, so you can and it's slugged, auto routed. So you can say category slash dot net. And automatically you will see all the blog posts in a list because they are tagged with dot net. Mm -hmm. And you don't have anything to do, and that's super useful. Here, the issue is that if we keep this thing, these guys, they don't have a route. So I was thinking about making it possible for inner items to have a route and then just register them also in the main route table. And internally, it will also contain something like this to say, okay, the main content item is this guy. And then the controller will have to load this property inside the main content item and render it. This is doable. Um, and I and I, I don't see us raising a, a taxonomy module without being able to access each content item, each term inside a taxonomy. <clears throat> I don't see any issue about it. It's just that normally people will use taxonomies in a different context, in multiple different contexts. So just having them just Having other routes there for for this is maybe useful for some people, but most usage is not that. I don't use it most of the time. Okay, it's just to tag things, and you list list blue, red, and done. I mean, if I'm listing this for a product, then I'm going to say like in the product page, uh, yeah, this product is ca categorized uh, pro uh, blue. Uh, like you like so how do yeah. you make that so you, you can this is a categories list let's say it's a taxonomy and okay. when when you click on something you want to list all the items for that so you will create a it will be some lots of code because you will have to create the routes then parse it then find it in the taxonomy then do a query to find all the items which are tagged from that and then display them that's weird okay so I still think we should have these routes. But that's my second uh, issue. I will probably fix it, but that's my second issue. <clears throat> hey, like I said, we can still have it. It's not it's not a problem. It's just maybe the way I see it is maybe if, if, if it's for blogs, then we should have like slash blog slash uh, taxonomy tree. Yeah, it can't be specific to a, a type. Um, okay, well, that's uh, the current status of the feature. So I will probably do a, a tree part or change back part to handle also trees. Um, uh, then uh, find a solution for this routing because it will also be useful for other things. Uh, for instance, um, in the agency, we have many back parts, name back parts for services and team and everything. And some people have asked, like, uh, if you want to 
display the detail of a service or a team, then how do you do that? Well, right now there is no, no way to route a sub item in a back part. So that's an issue, then that will solve that too. Um, as long as they, if there is an auto route, then we can access it and that will be fine. Um, auto route slash alias, I have to check. Uh, well, that's it. That's the status of taxonomy. So some progress uh, that also raises some questions. Any questions on that, comments? It's fine, <laughs> it looks nice. Even if there's some problem. It, yeah, they will be solved. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I want to talk about it, to find the best solutions. Okay, good. And that's it, no more demos. Um, so next meeting, we'll see the progress on that and all the other PRs. Some things will be merged in Orchard 1 because Jay is back and sent like 20 pull requests on Orchard 1. Thank you, Jay. Um, they should be merged on uh, Thursday when we do the triage. And then uh, that's it. Um, so see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.